the Build Brunch, the daily morning show where we talk about the latest topics in entertainment. I'm Brittany Jones Cooper. I'm Shannon Coffey. I'm Allie Colbert. And I'm Lucas Tim. Woo! Hi, everyone. Happy yeah. Friday. Happy Friday. Um, before we begin, I got a little first course to serve you guys. Okay. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you guys saw this, but um, Andy Cohen and also... Friend of the show. Friend of the show and uncle to all of uncle us now. Bruce, yeah. Uncle Bruce <laughs> Bozzi. Um, we're flying together to France. They're going on vacation together. And um, two hours away from France, their flight turned around to go back to New York because someone flushed something down the toilet and broke the toilet to the plane. Literally. So they, by the time they arrived in New York, it was 20 minutes after the time they would have just gone to France. Right. So that's what I don't understand. Yeah. They were already four hours in and they turned back four hours instead of just flying to And then a day hours. later had to get, do the whole uh, thing over why again. Why couldn't they just land? I have no idea. Such I have no idea if it was a bad poop. <laughs> or, or something, put something else down the toilet. We had no idea. But Andy documented it, Andy and Bruce, on yeah. their Instagrams. And it was so fun. I was like, I was texting Bruce, being like, this is hysterical. Um, but a pain in the ass. Because imagine, like, you know, you the whole thing, you board a plane, and you take off light. And like, you're, you're, Andy, you said he was passed out. He was asleep. You're going to land in France. And you off. Never, never mind. We're going back to JFK. <laughs> that is such, that is so painful. It is what a worst. waste of a day. I would be so pissed. The only, okay, well, one time that almost rivaled that, but not really, I was, my thought was delayed four hours because a certain sticker fell off the side of the plane. Oh my One God. One sticker. That was it. All, I'm like, what the, uh, is it like a little like Hello Kitty sticker? Like what's the sticker? Yeah. Like you put it on? Like, I don't know. But that's like, it's this probably, probably beats like, out. exit. <laughs> yeah, it's like literally. Oh, no one's gonna know. <laughs> But that story makes me want to just go on a plane and flush things down and see like, <laughs> what's it gonna take. Just because they won't tell us what it was, right. so I'm just gonna test objects until the plane doesn't go. And then they're like, you now I know, it was a how, shoe. Like how close to the destination? Like we're 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Like, oh, someone Turn flushed around. it down. Like, we're turning around. Uh, is it because maybe like they couldn't use the toilets and like you can't fly if there's no like if you can't access the bathroom? But, but there's then you, multiple bathrooms. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make sense. But I don't know. It, it yeah. must have been something like dangerous, like right. something that when it came into contact with poop would blow up or something. Okay. And, okay, yeah, maybe. Okay. Delta hasn't responded. Sorry to name Delta. But I'm only doing this because I want Delta to give us an answer. So, yeah, Delta, Delta, Delta I don't know, but I, There's also another story, real quick, that Nicole Byer told on her Twitter a while back, where she, like, I think it was also Delta, and she unrolled her blanket, and there was a human turd in it. No. And they didn't stop the plane for that, and I would have been freaked out. That I've is also, so upsetting. It is, and I've also and been, hilarious. Uh, like, real quick, what been, like, uh, that one was, I'm pretty sure, Delta, and on JetBlue, Delta. Two, two flights in a row, I got to my seat, and it was covered in <laughs> menstruation blood. No. And I've been like, I can't sit here. And they were like, here, here's a wet napkin. Clean it yourself. And I'm like. I like JetBlue. I love JetBlue. I only fly JetBlue, even jet with pink. all the menstruation blood. Uh, jet Red. Yeah, red. Jet Red. <laughs> the one thing is, like, whenever there's a delay or you have to, like, fly back, I know that every, all the passengers are so upset. They're like, how could you do this? How could you do this? It's like, do you want us to die? Yeah. Like, yeah. sometimes, like, there's actually really bad things happening, and people are like, just fly the plane. No, it's, it's like, like the like, plane's going to crash if we get on the it's plane. It's like weather delays. I was in Chicago, and they're going back to New York, like, Delays all about like no, this is ridiculous. Um, so it's like hailing, yeah, and it's like yeah, you want like, gotta die. Out there. <laughs> right, it's Sharknado. <laughs> we can't fly. Yeah. Gotta stay. Look at that. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, <laughs> opened up to Marie Claire magazine about splitting up with Prince William when the two were in college back in 2007. The future Queen of England said the breakup made her a stronger person, even though she wasn't happy about it at the time. Mm. Mm. Ten years later, we're getting the, yeah, the hot deal. My yeah. favorite part is that the royal family um, apparently says that the, the two, uh, Prince William and Kate Middleton, cannot talk about mm -hmm. having gone on a break. Yeah. Right. This because is, it you know, gives the wrong Yeah, answer. so the information in this article is actually from like 2010. They but, sort of just pulled it together to right. look at the relationship. An investigative because, piece. Because they haven't said anything about the breakup since they got engaged because they haven't been right. allowed to. Well, when we watch The Crown in, ten, in five years and they get to this part and the Queen's like, William, you can't speak of the time that you broke up with Kate. Um, I think it's you funny You cannot speak of when you were in an open relationship. relationship. Wait, well, well, that's what's funny about it, because like, apparently the quotes from whatever time is like, we just wanted time to like to be on our own. It's like, no, you just wanted to fuck other people. Yeah, like, you just absolutely. wanted, They're like, just calling. be honest. We, we all, we in relationships sometimes just need to go, go fuck other people and you come back together. And I'm glad they're together because um, she's making a great um, duchess and future queen consort of England, so. Yeah. yeah. I just like it. Royals are just like us. When I read this, totally. I was like, yeah, this is what every college couple does. Like, I, right. don't, I don't know why we thought that they would be together for 10 years perfectly and nothing happened. Like, right. of course, they probably did the most fucked up stuff to each other. 
Wow. wow. Your time is really Whoa, okay. Whoa. That's, that's what a relationship is. Uh, if you watch Sex in the City, come on. Well, you... no, Sex in the City, that's like literally the least realistic depiction of relationships. Yeah. But um... Oh, I would disagree. I have dated every single one of those no, guys. No, it sounds like you have had a horrible yeah. go. Yeah, I've had a horrible go at it, guys. But it's, I, I like... You want to just talk about what happened yeah. to you? Talk about yeah. all of my aunt. Brittany's like, something happened to Kate and William and it's bad and I relate. And we're like... Whoa, it's like, what? Oh, Whenever we talk about the royal family, though, it is a touchy subject. It yeah. triggers for you. me in a weird way. It really gets you going. Yeah, just because I can't imagine like every aspect of my life being controlled in the way that it is with right. them, and it just seems like it would be tough. And I feel for them, guys. Watch the documentary. Sounds, you, oh, oh yeah, you I got that's you. Why I have to unplug it. Watch it. It actually sounds like Kate um, from the quotes that I read in the Marie Claire uh, article. She sounded like she was upset and she didn't really yeah. want the break. So. I mean, maybe I would imagine, especially the pressure of Prince William and like knowing mm -hmm. that his future would exist in the spotlight, he might need to take a break. And I don't know if it's, I mean, I'm sure he saw other people, but I don't know if it's necessarily like because of that. I right. can imagine that being really Do difficult. we even know how long it was? Though? It was only no. a few months. Sounds, yeah, yeah, it, it wasn't like very he long. Just, they said he said no to spending New Year's Eve with her family, which but, is mm -hmm. like, I hate I spending the holidays with other people's families. Then you get like looped into their drama. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so much drama. God. And but, I've read reports though that he sort of, gave her a break because he knew what he was asking her mm -hmm. to give up. So sort of like, oh he gave my her the God, break. That is so because obnoxious. once they got back together, he knew they were gonna get engaged and he knew that it was gonna change both of their lives right. forever. But I hate that, like, I'm doing this for you. Like, shut the fuck up. Well, he seems well, like yeah. a nice guy. Well, but also, but also, she also <laughs> said, she also said in that, um, the Maria, from the Claire article <laughs> quote is that she then, though was not happy with the breakup, like used the time to become a stronger person. Yeah. So, you know, I, what I like about this is like, um, cause sometimes when people say like, when you break up and if you're meant to be together, you come back together. I kind of like that this actually worked out that yeah, way. So. Cause it kind of proves that like, if you are meant to be together, it will happen. And honestly, it seems that way that they are stronger because of it. And they have three great kids, Prince George, has the life I deserve, um, <laughs> and I will never stop believing that. And yeah, so I, li I really like them, so I'm glad they're happy. Yeah, so if you love someone, run as far yeah. away from them as possible, yeah. and if it's meant to be, you'll come back together. Somehow, you'll be somehow, together. leave somehow. it the face, somehow. somehow. It's somehow. serendipity, yeah. serendipity. Well, now on to another partnership I'm excited about. Rihanna and Donald Glover appear to be working together on a mysterious new project. The two were spotted on set in Cuba, igniting speculation that they're working together on a new movie or music video. What? This is Whoa. so exciting. Havana Unana. <laughs> He's doing a remix of that. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, yeah. Uh, first of all, let's just uh, applaud Donald Glover's body. Oh. <laughs> I mean, two of the most beautiful bodies I've ever seen in that photo. Oh, man. I it just so cool. I hope they're making everything. I hope they're making a feature film, a yeah. music video, an album. A, a baby. Media, yeah, a like baby. A ba everything. I just yeah. want it all from them. I yeah. know. These but, are two of my favorite artists. So, I, I, you know, we don't know what they're collaborating on, but... That's cool. It, you know it's gonna be good. I mean, we truly have no, no idea yeah. what's going on. It's we, just a photo. We are literally, we're literally just Brittany's speculating. Brittany's like, I'm thrilled. I'm like, I have no yeah, idea no what idea. they're up to. They but literally could have met for drinks. You, wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Rihanna's never cute. done us wrong though. Like she's yeah. never no, released Rihanna, anything no. that was bad. Like her lingerie line kills it. Her makeup line is perfect. Everything she does, like. And what points to is that she, as we we report, reported on this show, is making new music. So it kind of points yeah. to that two albums. two albums that they could be working together on something, or if not, a musical movie of some sort, which is really cool because, like we already established, they yeah. are so talented. Well, when you look through all the fan tweets and stuff, apparently there's a project called Guava Island, and okay. so they are actually shooting something. People just aren't sure whether it's a movie or a music video. She has her huge Diamond Ball charity event right. coming up, which Issa Rae is hosting. I wish I could Oh go. my God, no way. I know, I'm so excited. But a lot of people are speculating that she's going to unveil like a music movie video at the Diamond Ooh. Ball and he, then launch her album and after that. And he's performing there. Right, yes. Well, Guava Island sounds like a delicious movie. It does. <laughs> <laughs> At Jumbo Juice, I think it's on the sky. Guava yeah. Island? Island? That sounds oh, what's in so that? good. It's like banana, yep. there's like no mango. Guava. What? There's no guava in it. Oh. I'm joking. <laughs> wow, okay. Wow, you guys never listen to me. Like, why no, don't I stop this? <laughs> Brittany, do you know? know. Also, Brittany I don't really know. I'm going to be honest. We were like, I'm going to be honest. I don't, really know, I don't really know what it is. So Guava's like, a fruit. A fruit. See, I don't, oh, I don't okay. know. Okay, so it's more of a fruit. That was 100% me. That was 100% me because I don't know no, what that is. I didn't think it was funny. No, yeah, oh, no. But we weren't supposed to stop down. Like, you said it's smoothie. I was like, and there's no guava in it. No, I just don't know what it is. I didn't know what it was. It's not like we killed a great moment. We were literally just listing fruits. We were like, Banana, yeah. strawberry, yeah. kiwi. And I was and like, were like, oh, I don't, 
me, how no, dare you? Wait, 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 no, you said that and I realized I don't know what that is and I was like, what is that, what I is that, what is that? Yeah, I'm just a bitch. Uh, <laughs> She's just a bitch, I just don't know what fruits are. Yeah, yeah. 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 okay, fair. <laughs> we need help. Yeah. Uh, in other news, Katherine Heigl is making her mark on the small screen. The actress who had a famous falling out with Shonda Rhimes and caused an uproar among Grey's Anatomy fans in 2008 made her comeback in July as a series regular for USA Network's Suits in which she plays Samantha Wheeler. Mm. Are we ready for the comeback of Katherine Heigl? Will there be a comeback? This is her third comeback. Yeah, it's been 15 yeah. years of comebacks. She's trying to come back? <laughs> Can we talk about the other comebacks? So there was State of Affairs on NBC mm -hmm. that lasted a season. In 2015. Yep. Then there was Doubt on CBS that lasted four episodes. So, so come back. <laughs> Here we go. Katherine Heigl is an alleged biatch. Mm. Alleged. alleged. Big, alleged. big time alleged. diva, sources say. Um, and I, you know, when I was, uh, re where was this article written? Yeah, so Lee Blickley, I want to shout yeah. out to her for Huffington Post, wrote this amazing article. Good article. It was it's really, really good. so, so good. I read it in the Daily Mail. <laughs> and Katherine Heigl, what is so funny about that? It was the Huffington Post. The Huffington Post, I read it in the Huffington Post. <laughs> and uh, I forgot that this happened, that Katherine Heigl withdrew herself yes. from Emmy nominations yes. during one of Grey's Anatomy seasons because she didn't think the material deserved an Emmy, which is literally the bitchiest thing you could ever say. Yeah. A direct shot to at that time, Shonda Rhimes was still very involved with the show as showrunner of Grey's Anatomy, so it was a really direct hit to Shonda, and apparently really offended the writers and the crew of that show because it it's such a was such an unneeded statement that you, she didn't say because her character wasn't great because of the material that really put her on the bad side of Shonda, who later said like later on like on Scandal or whatever, I don't deal with bullshit anymore. Yeah. Like, and so she said no, there's she no, no high goals. No, yes, yeah. she literally said there's no high goals. Yes, that is crazy. And don't you trust someone like Shonda Rhimes? I do. Yeah. And she's built so many stars. She's built so many careers. Mm -hmm. And she, um, she, Catherine Heigl had already won an Emmy for this role. Yes. So for her to come back the second year and diss on the writers like that. Who do you think you are? I mean, how do you bite the hand that feeds you? That's, I mean, totally. it's not a good move. Do you think she's just not, like, one of the, do you think she's one of those people who's just, like, totally not self-aware? That's what I think. And, and yeah. thinks that she's being, like, humble and that everybody was going to be like, oh, my God, you're so cool for withdrawing right. yourself. And yeah. instead we were like, you're a bitch. Right. That's right. so rude. Why would you criticize them and like then, that? And then yeah. also she went after, you know, Knocked Up was a really great movie and she ended up later going out saying that the, the, the women characters in it are portrayed in a very sexist way and and you know I'm, I, and I and again we've established yesterday that I, I'm yeah. a, a feminist whatever and I, I tried to look at her point of view and look at those two the main two female characters and I kind of disagree with her in a way because you know Leslie Mann is like yeah she's the mom going through shit or whatever but she's still like a pretty like you know self-aware person has a lot of funny mm -hmm. moments and Catherine Heigl's character yeah she's like the working girl who gets pregnant. Like, yeah. I feel like that's just like not the correct an analyzing of that movie. I, I think it's unfortunate that she is just an actor in that movie yeah. and doesn't have any kind of say or input. And I think that um, with Leslie Mann, like she definitely like, you know. Because her husband is Yeah, so she has more room to improvise right. and collaborate on that. So she definitely got to be funny in that movie. Right. And I feel like Catherine's suffering from just being an actress mm -hmm. and then waiting until the project comes out to be like, actually, it sucks. Exactly. And you're like, hey, right. couldn't you have been more collaborative in the experience? Totally. It just seems like uh, even if she felt that the movie was like, you know, not portraying women in a great light, it seems like she has an issue with like time and place of like yeah. these comments because mm -hmm. saying something is sexist, that was really like ahead, that's like ahead of oh, a yeah. time at when that was going on. Like right now, this climate would be all over that. We'd be like, yeah, yeah. it's fucked up. Mm. Um, sorry, that was my impersonation of Twitter troll. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, it's the way she seems to be positioning herself always after the fact, that's what's really problematic. Yeah. Yeah, I will say with this Shonda thing, though, a couple years later, she did sort of apologize for yeah. that. She was like, you know what? I kind of maybe should have just been like, shut up, take the nomination, it's okay, and then be more involved later. Yeah. So look, here's but, the thing. She has apo she's apologized publicly. Yeah. I will support. I watched a clip of her on Suits. She's good. They needed to fill that void when Meghan Markle left. She's a decent actress, so I'm totally. hoping that like yeah. she can put some of this behind her yeah. and just be a little more like in the moment. I mean, she's and grateful a good actress. Like, yeah, I, I mean, thought from yeah. like the first couple seasons of Grey's Anatomy, like yeah. she was really great in that, and she has had opportunities to totally. be a part of bigger she films. Has. Like, wasn't there like a rumor about her with uh, being involved in Lord of the Rings? No, well, no, wait, no, this is was a diff different thing. But I wanted to say to too because yes, she is talented. And I think what we've seen recently with the whole Me Too movement is that when when actresses are deemed to be difficult or divas, they lose a lot of opportunities. And when a recent when the Harvey Weinstein stuff was coming out, Peter Jackson, of course. 
um, Oscar-winning director of the Lord of the Rings trilogy came out and said that Ashley Judd and, and Mira Savino, he purposely took out of the running for the three main female characters in that film because Harvey Weinstein told them told him that they were difficult to work with. Meanwhile, it's because they both denied his advances. Right. So I think it's also to give Catherine Heigl kind of perspective that like it's hard when when you get when you, if she made one mistake with Shonda, you get de you get yeah. generalized and characterized this way. It will destroy your career because yeah. ten years ago, Catherine Heigl was starring in movies, Twenty Seven Dresses, Knocked Up. Grace Anatomy, all stuff, and then she kind of fell by the wayside. She lives so. in Utah now. She lives in Utah, yeah. now, but that was by choice. She lives a very yeah. simple life. Right. She has children. But she, she lives in Utah. Lives. It's worth pointing out that, like, here we are discussing, like, should we allow her to come back? Right. Should we? And she didn't really do anything super bad. No. Whereas, like. When abusers are outed, yeah. we're like, oh, we feel bad for yeah. that rapist. Bring him back. Let him yeah. do his oh special. Poor Louis. Oh, I have to hear yeah. one more Charlie Rose doing a TV show about yeah. being misunderstood. I swear to God. I mean, like, no. Yeah. No. Bye. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, like I said, I watched her on Suits. I think she's really good. She's apologized yeah. for her behavior. Hopefully this time she doesn't just come out and bash Suits. I mean, hopefully she's not <laughs> from her mistakes is that if she has yeah. a problem with the show or the production or the writers, she... Uh, Talk, She's like, I'm to happy directly. to be back, but Suits isn't that great. I know, right? <laughs> We're like, what? it's like, Catherine, go home. No, I'm supposed to be great. Yeah. Anyway, so more celebrities are jumping onto Oprah Winfrey's book club bandwagon. <laughs> First, there's a Tonight Show host, Jimmy Fallon, but we can't forget about Reese Witherspoon or fellow actress Emma Roberts and divorce star Sarah Jessica Parker. These stars have turned their love for books into an opportunity to engage fans, get them to read, and give a voice to new authors. Uh, can I jump in here first in that yeah. Reese Witherspoon is like the fan all of us are of Oprah. Like yeah. she got to do a movie with her. She started producing and stuff because of Oprah. Like she's so into Oprah that she's doing a book club. I just love that she's such a fan girl and she does everything that Oprah's well, with, doing. With, yeah, she, <laughs> she yeah. really is. It's, it's exactly how I would be. Like, but with Reese, <laughs> with maybe with, with, with Reese and, and books is that books have given Reese the opportunity, like Big Little exactly. Lies, Little Fires Everywhere with Carrie Washington on Who. Like books have allowed Reese to become an executive producer and, and create create these incredible programs. And so specifically it's female narratives. Be female yeah. narratives, yeah. Really Go great. books. I know. Reese right. loves books, guys. I know, yeah. she loves, <laughs> look how smart she is with her glasses. Right. Wow. Yeah, she's such a cutie. <laughs> Those don't have lenses on them. <laughs> I actually yeah. think it's really cool that Jimmy Fallon started like his book club on The Tonight Show and like has people doing that because uh, that's like something you would never see on like late night television. Never. True. It's so not, of late night. No, it's also, not. he doesn't seem to me like a lover of literary works. <laughs> no, but he is. he's not. But he's not reading. But he's not reading like <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. Right. You know, he's reading like fun fan yeah. favorites and like making those accessible to everyone, which I think is great. Yeah, yeah. for sure. That's cool, and, and it's a huge audience five nights a week to be spreading like because you know no one reads anymore. So be, yeah. and for him to be like, yeah, watch my TV show, but also go read a book, I think it's pretty cool. And which, what's interesting is that Amazon has seen a spike in those books after he announced it. So basically he gave his viewers like a bunch of books to choose from, they had to tweet their favorites. And Amazon said sales on all of those books went up. And then the one that he chose like tripled but, in profits but, or whatever. So it again, it's having that Oprah effect where when you put your effect. name on it, it makes people buy it. Yeah. And, and Emma Roberts has been doing it forever, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Beltris. Yeah. I love her book club. Their aesthetic and everything about it is so cool. And I think she has, like, a great vibe on Instagram. And every time she she's really good at unboxing things. <laughs> like, yeah. the way she, she just, like, I feel like makes young people want to read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, you know, I feel like the other people on this list make old people want to read. Yeah. Do you guys know how to read? <laughs> Um, kind of. They yeah, give me these cards, <laughs> and I'm always like, ah, oh, la, 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 ooh. The teleprompter is just yeah. like a bunch of like uh, images. Really. Yeah, symbols. Do you guys, but do you guys like to read books? Like, it, yes. it is something that we watch so much TV. I just started on Ronan Farrow's book, The War ooh. and Peace. Yeah. It's a great light read about how America's just destroying <laughs> diplomacy. <laughs> President Trump. What? Um, yeah, no, it's really good. I'm reading it. That's fine. Yeah. This conversation about books is going to captivate viewers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> people like to know what people are reading, I think. I do. Like, I just read Sharp things? Objects because I always like to watch things. Wait, are you watching the show? Yeah, so I always like to read things. Oh my God, I don't watch know what's it, gonna... So I read Sharp Objects. I was like, uh, Is anyone I'm else in. watching that show? Yes. It's so good. It's I'm, so I'm glad I didn't read the book because I have no idea who no, did but, it. Yeah. But I'm really excited when the last episode, the ghost of her dead her, <laughs> Her dad's like, you're not safe here. And I'm like, holy <laughs> shit, that's how it ends. I know, I'm but struggling. the book is that good. Where you're <laughs> the book's good, too. And you're like, I'm like watching this. It's that's amazing. why it helps to have these like celebrity book clubs, even though it's like kind of like, you know, dumb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, if you don't know exactly what to read exactly. next, if you hear buzz about a book and like it's on television a lot, it's a good way to just pick your next read. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Yeah. Wait, I have a quick question. For you who read the book, when you watch Sharp Objects, what's worse, seeing the imagery in the show or what you imagined while you were reading? Mm. 
Because sometimes my imagination yeah. gets really dark, but that show actually like goes Very dark. so intense with that imagery, and it like freaks me out to the point where sometimes I'm like, I'll just read the book. I think, it, but I think the book, I think it honors the book. The book is pretty mm -hmm. creepy and like vile, and then the show just like does it so beautifully. Right. Yeah. Well, that, we talked about earlier this earlier this week about adaptations of book to movies or TV shows. Yeah. Like you have to honor the, the literary yeah, work, yeah. but like you kind of have to reinvent it in a way. Mm -hmm. And I, at least I, that's what I've been reading about Sharp Objects that they they're honoring it, but they're kind of changing a little bit more. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oof. Well, remember how much you love to play Candy Crush? Well, everyone's new favorite mobile game obsession has arrived. Legend of Soul Guard comes from the creators of Candy Crush and features a mix of puzzling and strategy with increasing levels of difficulty in nine different worlds. The game sends players through the frozen tundra to, write, to fight off their enemies. Um, do you guys play games on your phone? No. I Honest? do. You do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I play like all the stupid ones. Like I play Zombie Farm, and the one there was like there was just, like a castle where you just like live. I play the dumbest games, but I, I like come from a long line of people who are addicted to video games. Yeah. Like my mom was obsessed with Candy Crush. Mm -hmm. Like my family, we almost lost her. Like it was a serious <laughs> addiction. Yeah. Like on Facebook, she would just be like, "Send me this thing," and I'd be like, "No, mom, like, who are you?" I'd be like shaking my mom, like, "You don't need this candy." <laughs> intense. Like it was kind of scary for yeah. real. But she's like that, and I have that from her so I'll just download every game like all the time. Well see I used to play video games a lot like the Star Wars Battlefront like um, Super Mario mm -hmm. Brothers like all, all that stuff I loved it but I purposely don't have games on my phones because I got so addicted to them and would waste would kind of spend my whole day doing it but a game like this you can play with magic and battle things and like <laughs> Yes, like I will. I love any game where I can be any sort of magical. The creature. only game that I remember a lot of my friends getting into was just the Farmville. Yeah, and just oh, like yeah. it's yeah. so funny, you see all these bitches from your high school yeah. being like, "I'm growing a farm." Like, <laughs> you were so mean in high school. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't. You couldn't take care of animals. You're not green. You know what I mean? It's like you were a bitch, and now you want like beans. Like, yeah. <laughs> beans are so good, though. Do you guys remember Flappy Bird? Is that what it was called? Angry Bird? Oh, Angry no. Bird. No, Flappy Bird. The one that went viral yeah. where the, it was like this app. And then like they, they yeah. actually like deleted it from the app store. And people were selling phones that had it really? already downloaded it. And it was going like for like thousands of dollars. Why wow. was it so fun? Yeah. Remember Flappy Bird was just the one where you go like tap, tap, tap. Oh. And the bird's like, Ooh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, and then you, it was so impossible to win. Mm. But everybody was so obsessed with it. There are some games it. like that that, that, uh, that are fun. I play like Candy Crush for a little bit, but it's harder to play games on my phone. I would rather play on a console. I actually want to buy a console. Yeah, oh, I yeah. can't. So I'm not allowed to buy a console at all. Be too addicted to it. Yeah, because I've had people <laughs> be like, "You really have a problem, and I'll lose you." Yeah, you know. And it then they're like, "Look your at blood. your mom," yeah. and my mom spoke yeah. me at the mouth. Give me the games. Give me the games. <laughs> <laughs> Why are people so addicted to these games, though? I like don't that's. Know. A, I, cause I don't have any games out. on my phone. I don't play games, so I don't get it. Do you have games on your phone? Do you have games on your phone? It's nice to just take a break and like not listening to the people around. Or does it, or does it give people a sense of accomplishment? Like just be like, I, oh, I beat this level, like I'm on level 10, look how good I am at this in this it's world. It's like endorphins, yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, I'm just, I hate my job kind of thing. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry to go, I'm sorry to take it to that no, psychological level. but if you're but, achieving in a game, but you're right. like real life, you're not really doing it. Like, oh, right. that's yeah. really yeah. interesting. I didn't think it was that. I think it's more just like a break from the real world yeah. when you want to like actually unwind. Okay. No? Yeah. yeah. SSX Tricky, PlayStation 2? We're, we're asking, we're asking questions here. <laughs> yeah. I said SSX Tricky, PlayStation 2. Oh. Yeah. Did you fucking hear me? Yeah. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. And now no it's time one? for today's guest. <laughs> Ian Deering is well known for his role as Finn in the Sharknado series. Now he's back for the sixth and final installment titled Last Sharknado, It's About Time. The film follows Finn as he travels back in time in a Sharknado turned time machine to resurrect his family by stopping the first Sharknado that started it all. Let's take a look. I'm gonna need a bigger chainsaw. Hi, nice to meet you. Everyone, put your hands together for Ian Ziri. Thanks. Hey, everybody. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I love it. You got some good weather here, by the way. Yeah, it's beautiful. Last couple days have been gorgeous. Yeah, before that, it was like a swamp. Yeah. Well, I grew up in New Jersey, so it's I'm not familiar oh, with so the you're territory. Familiar. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about this Sharknado movie. All right, All it right. is so much fun, so crazy. Did you yeah. ever think that you were going to get to do six of these? No, quite honestly, I didn't think there'd be 
a successful first movie. <laughs> <laughs> I read the script and it really had a lot of holes in it that were left to be filled by visual effects, and visual effects are really expensive. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think the production company would have the money to invest in making it quality content. I actually thought I'd be working with hand puppets. No way. <laughs> yeah, it's like, how are they gonna do this? How are they gonna make a shark jump up a rope to try and bite me? Uh -huh. Yeah, that's good. What was the filming process like with all of those special effects? Mm. It's all done on green screen. Right. Yeah. Those special effects are special effects that are done in a computer. Right. So literally, there's a room full of uh, visual effects artists mm -hmm. that work around the clock to get these movies uh, where they need to be to deliver to the network. Uh, they hand it off and the paint's still wet. They're working <laughs> around the clock. Wow. Oh, wow. And you've, all, you've done it's six films within like five years. So you've been <laughs> yeah. like living and breathing Sharknado, basically. Pretty much. And like, are you, apparently this is the last one. Are you kind of excited that now you gotta have, you have a little bit of a break? Yeah, or, mixed feelings. Mixed. I mean, it's been so great. Uh, NBC Universal's been great to me. Yeah. I feel like I have a home there. Mm -hmm. um, seeing little kids come up to me, you know, telling me they've got my picture on their pajamas. Yeah. Oh. Feels great. I mean, it's, uh, it's wonderful. I, I, uh, I will actually miss uh, making yeah. these movies. Yeah. My cousin Ava loves the Sharknado films. So. Yeah, like, literally, it's fun. Yeah, she's like, Lord of the Rings sucks, Sharknado, amazing. We gotta fight about it. It's like, this is her favorite film. Right so are, on. Yeah. She's my new BFF. Good, I'll tell her. That's awesome, better than Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard that yet. <laughs> so I'm looking at this movie poster and I see a dinosaur in it. So yeah. tell me some of the things your character encounters in a... Well, since after Sharknado 5, we left the Earth, Earth scorched. There was nothing left except Finn and his wife's head in a bag. Aye. As uh, yeah. When, miraculously, his son, who's played by Dolph Lundgren, pops out of the sky in a Doc Brown flying machine telling me I need to go back to the future to stop the very first Sharknado from happening in order to stop every other subsequent happening uh, throughout history. Mm. So that's where we pick up in six. It's time travel. Yeah. Uh, because there's nothing left of the Earth, <laughs> what are we gonna do? Yeah. Uh, so we go back in time. The very first Sharknado happened in prehistoric time. Oh. And it's like assembling all the pieces of a puzzle so we can stop the last cool. first Sharknado and stop all of them. Yeah. And we jump to the future and we go back to the past and whether it's medieval times with King Arthur and Merlin oh my God. or- uh, oh, my God. I, oh my God, I'm so into this. <laughs> That's Neil awesome. Neil deGrasse Tyson. Plays. No, more. really? Yeah. No way! I love him so much. Oh, I'm so <laughs> this is amazing. Just in case you weren't taking this movie seriously, <laughs> yeah. we brought in the big guns yes. to really validate the science behind Sharknado. Right. So that must be so cool. That I mean, you've been in space, and now you're going like these films have taken you everywhere, Night out of this world. Cowboy sharks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Colonial War. It was just. I mean, yeah. there was no time period that uh, wasn't thought about yeah. or considered. It all has to do with budget. I mean, what, what they can make happen. The fact that we were able to recreate the colonial uh, revolution. Incredible. <laughs> was a lot of fun. Leslie Jordan plays uh, Benjamin Franklin. Oh, uh -huh. uh, that was, <laughs> we're, I don't, you, you know who he is. Yeah. He is so funny. Um, yeah. We had uh, Alaska from RuPaul's Drag Race. Uh -huh. Yes. Playing a character, and she's really funny. Um, it just people would chime in, hey, yeah. could I come and play? And I want to come down and get eaten. And uh, <laughs> you know, there's actually one sequence where we had so many people clamoring to be in the movie, and you know, the producers are very generous. We want them all. Yeah. There might not be any exposition for them or any room within the story. So there's this one Sharknado with all these people flying around, <laughs> just, to, just to include them. My wife and kids are, are in it. Uh, are they really? Yeah, there's a little beach sequence where my wife and daughters are uh, playing at the beach and my little daughter looks up and oh, oh a Sharknado comes, she runs to her mom and Aaron, my wife, she kills a shark. I love oh, that's that. cool. We're that's a family so of shark slayers. Yeah, shark slayers. All these people. Uh, but you know what? Um, yeah, pretty much if you were around set, Hey, would you mind standing in the back? <laughs> okay, so if there's a, a seven, we're gonna be. Well, okay. I wanna be in yeah. you, Right now, yes, I'm in. It's, Especially if Neil deGrasse Tyson is. Okay, yeah. you're yeah. here first, folks. <laughs> um, not really sure there's gonna be a seven. We right. tie this movie up very nicely. Mm. Cool. It comes full circle. What we explain in the ending is um, is very, very heartwarming. Oh. You know, we've been through so much with these movies. We've uh, been to space. We've been all over the world. We've been all over time. And you know, Finn has always been a family man, right. um, an ordinary man who goes to extraordinary lengths to mm -hmm. keep his family safe and protected from Sharknados. <laughs> well, in this last movie, he makes the ultimate sacrifice to save everyone. Because uh -huh. if you're gonna go back in time, right. 
you can kind of right the wrongs of history. And he, he does an amazing job with, with his team yeah. to make that happen. Oh, that's, so, that's so cool. Yeah. By chances, do they go back to the last election at all? Oh. Just... <laughs> you know, we try to stay out of politics. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's fair. They're Good killing move. sharks here. They're not going after the whole political scene. Good move. Yeah. Is there a yeah. moment over the, you know, the past five years that you've been filming that stands out to you as just particularly fun and Sharknado oh, stuff? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> it was here in New York City. Yeah. Sharknado 2, we filmed in Manhattan. We blocked off part of Broadway up mm -hmm. at 54th Street. And I'm standing on top of a fire truck, uh, trying to inspire people to fight back. And uh, I said, you know, it takes more than, than a shark to keep a good man down. It takes more than a shark to, <laughs> to stop a New Yorker. And I raised this 45 pound chainsaw in the air. And I said, let's go kill some sharks. <laughs> and it wasn't just our crew and the background artists, but everybody that could hear me, all the New Yorkers walking to work that day, blocks away. Yeah, let's <laughs> It was it's awesome. So New York. That's so it New York. Fight. It was awesome. It was just a, a, such a visceral response, so immediate and so just organic. Yeah. We didn't plant that seed. We they just. It was amazing. That's I awesome. Love that. that was a, an epic moment, and that was right before I think the best shark kill that Finn Shepard ever had. Yeah. It was a no look behind the back shark fillet. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> where the, the chainsaw, the script read, and Finn, you know, swings the chainsaw in the air and it cuts the shark in half. And I said to Anthony, our director, I said, dude, this thing's like 45 pounds. Right. I can't swing this. It's going to take me off the edge of the, the fire truck. But I have something. He's like, okay. Knowing that the visual effects mm -hmm. artists always have my back, right. I try to give them things to work with. They're very intuitive. So I said, trust me, they're going to know exactly what to do with this one. So I, let's go kill some sharks. And I look up and there's a shark and that's the moment where I was supposed to swing it. But instead I turned my back and I leaned back and I took this monster chainsaw and I just put it on my knee and <laughs> got out of the way for the artist to draw the shark flying through the blade. Uh -huh. And it's epic. The, the huge yeah. great white just gets splayed in half and you can see the inside as it goes. And you know, it's the best kill I think so far. Uh -huh. Although I, I haven't seen everything we've done right. in six. To date, that's the, the most epic that's awesome. shark fillet. That, that sounds impressive. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. So cool. Has there been a moment though on set when you're doing something and you're like, guys, what are what am I doing? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, that's daily. That's daily. <laughs> um, I look at the script and I'll say, that. What, what's happening here? The script changes. It's ever changing. It's very fluid because of locations. Because we get people uh, that we didn't expect when the script was written. It has to stay fluid. So there were times where. Um, we were in Romania shooting this last movie, and we had three uh, cameo artists working with us, but they weren't there yet. Mm -hmm. So we had to use body doubles, and it was very cold. It was about 10 degrees. I'm wearing Jeez. a denim jacket and jeans, uh -huh. freezing. It's so cold, and we have to have body doubles, and we have to shoot over their back. So you can't see their face, but the costumes you'll recognize when we turn around. So it's so funny. I was so cold. I, I couldn't even really emote. I couldn't really bring what was necessary for the character. I had to do it a couple times. But yet, I still got a note from the uh, producers. We really weren't happy with that scene. It just, <laughs> it's like you weren't even there, Ian. I was like, dude, seriously? <laughs> You're giving me that note? Right. Do you know the conditions that we're working in? With, and like, what did the actors who weren't there? Right, who <laughs> literally yeah. weren't there. It's, it's, just, ah. it's just very challenging. But ultimately, we're able to provide the, the content yeah. that's necessary mm -hmm. to make it acceptable. You know, we shoot these movies in 16, 17, sometimes 18 days. There's Whoa. no room for, Whoa. Uh, you know, if you look at the Meg, wow. for example, they spent $150 million on that movie. Sharknado was about two, maybe three. I don't know exactly what the budget wow. was. Wow. Wow. 18, that's incredible. That's I did not know it was less than a month. Oh, yeah. I mean, movies take months to make. Right, right. And we'll shoot what they'll spend a month on, we'll shoot in a day. So we're moving the camera. Sorry, there's no time for take two. I'm like, all right, we'll sit in post. All right, you, know, you just gotta show up knowing your lines right. and, and hoping for the best. And you know, there have been times where I've been in the editing with Anthony, and uh, we'll have to go back and re-record the dialogue right. because my face was so frozen, I wasn't articulate, or mm -hmm. I just didn't have the emphasis necessary to to really help the scene build. It. My intent as an actor is always to try and elevate the material, right. but 
sometimes it's so challenging because the environment works against you because the script is always changing. There's no room for, no time for rehearsal. It's, uh, it's literally guerrilla filming. It's shark yeah. filmmaking. Wow. <laughs> I love it. Um, um, well, I'm actually a huge 90210 fan. Yeah. Like, cool. yeah. I've loved you forever. Um, Thank you. That theme song is constantly stuck in my head. Like, <laughs> it's like on on loop. It's like. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like okay, now I'm not gonna leave you hanging. Me. I'm not gonna leave you thank hanging you, on thank that. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I I mean I want you to talk about that if the cast like if you guys keep in touch and also like. We're in a time now where people are bringing back old shows. They're making them into features. What is the possibility? Like, if I get on Twitter and I start a campaign, would you make a movie for you me? You wouldn't be the only one starting that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's out there. It's out there. There's the 90210 movie uh, campaign on Instagram. There's fan clubs all over the world. Uh, you know, it's kind of hard to ignore that. <laughs> and what the the people that own the license, CBS owns the license to, to 90210. So we've all come up with some ideas, but it's up to them to really pull the trigger on it. I'm still great friends with all my former castmates. Mm -hmm. We talk. Um, got to work with Tori and her husband Dean on uh, Sharknado. She did an amazing job. She plays Finn Shepard's mom and dad. <laughs> kind of a twist in <laughs> reality, but it's Sharknado, so roll with it. Yeah. Uh, but we, we do, we all talk. Um, so yeah, it, it's certainly possible. You know, I wouldn't mind okay. at all working with them. Fingers and they were yeah, a big part that. of my uh, formative years. Uh, they're like brothers and sisters to me. So, yeah, I, I, I would consider it, absolutely. With the right story, though. It has to be the right story. Yeah. They did a reboot uh, of 90210, yeah. and it was a completely different, different. Yeah. yeah. Right. I don't acknowledge the reboot. No offense. <laughs> I love, you know, they did a great job. It's it lasted just, I want for the five original. years. I yeah. want the original. That's solid. Yeah. It's uh, a nice homage to, to the OG. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but we're purists. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I appreciate that. You know, so if we're going to pay it off, it has to be a direct relation to uh, what we did then. Mm -hmm. It can't be an iteration. It's got to be a. Uh, it's got to be derived from from the original cast, from the original story. Totally. The context has to be similar. Otherwise, it's you know, it's just not the same show. You've given us so much hope just now. Yeah. Yeah. You're saying there's, yeah, yeah, there's a chance. Of course, there's always Anything a chance. Anything you need, like <laughs> however I can support it, I'll get all my friends. Uh, we'll you know, about anything. five, seven million dollars an episode I'm cool. production. I'm cool. Work on that. Shannon, she will work on yeah. it. She'll write you a check. Yeah. Just don't cash it. Yeah. Well, and besides, um, <laughs> <laughs> we love her though. Besides, um, film and TV, you're also in fashion. You have a, a yeah. dress shirt line called um, the Icon by Chainsaw, which yeah. I love. Thanks. And I was reading about it, and one, the high tech fabric and the wrinkle free thing is incredible mm -hmm. because I my shirts are wrinkly all the time, but also the tri-color technology. Could you explain more about that? I never knew about that, and it sounds very interesting with these shirts. We started this about three years ago, my yeah. partner Mitchell and I, and um, it was an attempt to uh, capitalize on, on something where Sharknado was right. so exciting, and I saw a commercial that Tara had out there. She uh, had a cologne. Right. Yeah. And uh, wow, I really appreciated her moxie. I mean, she's going out to get it. I mean, we're, we do this as a living. Right. It's called hers is called like shark, right? Yeah. Hers is called shark. By Tara. <laughs> and uh, my partner said to me, "Well, what would you do if you were going to do something?" I said, "Well, it wouldn't be a thing. It would be a brand. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's got to be something that I could be passionate about." And he said, "Well, what would the logo be?" I said, "Well, you know, we're doing." I was so entrenched in Sharknado, so I said, "I don't know. It would be like cross chainsaws because <laughs> it's edgy, and I like that." Yeah. What would the company be? And I don't know. Chainsaw, chainsaw, <laughs> chainsaw brands, yeah. chainsaw brands. So we started running with that. We imported a whole bunch of stuff from uh, other countries and put the logo on it, just to test the waters to see yeah. if people would, if it would resonate. And it kind of did. All that stuff sold. I said, "Wow, let's take it to the next level." And now, three years later, we're just focusing on men's casual dress shirts. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's always a challenge for me because finding the right fit, finding the right material, finding... With you. Yep. Every time I wear a dress shirt and I wear it casually, the collar flies. Yeah. It doesn't attach. And I'm not a big fan of seeing the buttons because mm -hmm. that's the preppy thing to me. And it's yeah. just... So another thing I don't like is when the collar, the placket, this is the placket, yeah. when it slouches. Right. Because it looks sloppy. Yeah. And it's like, I like this collar to stand proud. It's... Yeah. It's Fantastic. right, picking up what I'm yes. putting down. 100%. So we developed this tricolor technology where the collars are held down with um, uh, a patent pending uh, 
design where there is a bungee loop and a button underneath uh -huh. to tack it in. There's also a uh, collar stay if you need to wear it with a cool. tie. The placket has yeah. increased fusing at the top so it, it doesn't slouch, so right. it stays proud. But yet the material is such that it's a four-way woven material, right. so it stretches, it breathes, it's antimicrobial. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not the greatest at hanging up my clothes when I take them off. Yeah. Uh, my wife's always getting on me. <laughs> I, I, it, it's just, you know, old habits are hard to break. But this material is wrinkle resistant. Right. It's also antimicrobial. <laughs> so if I'm traveling, I could have one or two shirts for, you know, a couple days where it's not gonna, it's gonna travel well with right. me. And the fact that I can wear it with a tie or wear it open, yeah. um, you know, makes it very versatile. So it's, we've designed a very versatile, casual men's dress shirt. It's uh, very body conscious. So typically shirts have their seams across the top of the shoulder, but by bringing our seams down across, it kind of leaves more room up here. It kind of shows the trap meat, the muscle yeah. up here. And we always want to amplify the male structure. Yeah. It's attractive. Uh, but a boxy shirt that doesn't have any uh, any cues or any or doesn't pay off the man's physique underneath it really isn't doing anything to empower that man. Clothes make the man, and if you're wearing the right clothes, it's really gonna yeah. help. Damn, yeah. you be more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all about these shirts. Like, you, know, you buy them online. You can find them at uh, ChainsawBrands.com. Yeah. And thanks so much for asking me about it. It's something that I'm really passionate about. No, I love it. I can tell you yeah. so much yeah. knowledge about yeah. it. It must be fun to have something that's out of the industry. And I'm well, in this, your I own search project. for the perfect, but I always feel the same thing. It's too dressed up. It's too, like, I never find the right ones. This, I really interested me. Didn't it's, you just it's feel an like awesome shirt. Yeah. We went from Sharknado to Shark Tank. I was like, yeah. 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 <laughs> we're we're going to invest. We're going to invest. Uh, you can find it at, at uh, chainsawbrands.com. Great. And uh, I think you'll dig it. You got a great physique. Yeah. The shirt will, uh, I'm trying. Mm. Yeah. Really let that show through. Yeah. Well, we'll check that out, Ian. Thank you so much for joining oh, us. Oh, my today. God. Thank you for having me. And you can catch Ian Deering in Last Short Sharknado. It's about time when it premieres this Sunday, August 19th at 8, 7 Central on the Sci Fi Channel. That's all from us today. We'll see you on Monday, same time, same table. Yeah. Yeah.